and through Mark chapter 2, the story of a paralyzed man. So this morning, once again, we are going to learn uh, how to work for Jesus Christ. And at the same time, how to work as a team. You know the story, right? The paralyzed man. And we do not know since when, but he was paralyzed. He couldn't walk. And for in my life, I think two, three days, I was not able to walk. And something happened on my hip muscle. And I, I walked just every inch to move around. But I do not know the feeling of it totally paralyzed and not able to walk the rest of the life. Pretty miserable situation. And not only his physical condition, but also his spiritual condition. He was spiritually miserable too. He was not really connected with God. His life didn't represent the teachings of God. So he suffered and suffered. And one day his friends brought the story of Jesus Christ. The Jesus, the healer, the great teacher, he even healed the lepers. When, the, when this paralyzed man heard at the first time, he was not so much encouraged. Maybe he loved the lepers. He, maybe he loved the prostitutes, but not me. He didn't want, he didn't really encourage to go to Jesus for the first time. But later on, he began to have a glimpse of a hope in his heart. Maybe he's the one who can change my life. And once again, he heard that Jesus came back to Capernaum. It's uh, like a headquarter of his ministry. And he asked his friends, Hey friends, can you take me to Jesus? Now I have courage to go to him. He may heal me, may change me, may forgive my sins, so that my life can be changed. So his friends laid on him the mat. I don't know what kind of mat they used, but they carried him to where Jesus was teaching. And if you carefully read from Mark chapter 1, the, the place where Jesus was teaching people gathered was Peter's house. Or say, some say Peter's mother-in-law's house. But I say more, more like Peter's house. So when, he, when they arrived at Peter's house, what was happening there? How many people are there? We do not know the exact number, but so many people packed inside and even probably outside. So he was not able to get in. We do not know whether this paralyzed man from other village or lived in Capernaum. We do not know because the, at the time, his fame. I'm sorry, it's I mean. <laughs> so, um, at the time, his fame was very known. So people from different parts of Israel, they came to Capernaum to listen to him. But anyway, he was, his way to Jesus was blocked. And he didn't give up. And he said, I know I cannot go through these people. They won't make a you know, way for me. But there's, a, I think, one way we can go to the roof and tear off the roof, <clears throat> excuse me, and bring me down. Do you think it's a good idea? But anyway, they, they agreed and took him to the roof and they tore off. The roof is not like the roof we have today. The mostly like uh, with um, soil and maybe part of grass. So they actually begin to dig in. And they made enough hole. What can you imagine when I said enough hole, how big would it be? 
when you uh, lay seat, the paralyzed man, do you lay the person vertically or horizontally? So in order to lay a man horizontally, I think at least like 2 meters and like 56 centimeters. Oh, it's not four, actually it's maybe one third of the house maybe. And they made a big hole and the four of them laid down in front of Jesus Christ. And we know the story. Jesus said, I forgive your sins. And after that he said, take your mat and go home. This man was desperate. He wanted to be healed. Wanted to be forgiven. Something messed, has been mess, messed up in his life. <clears throat> now he wants to have a right relationship with God. And do you think how many desperate people in our community? In your neighborhood? Who want to come to Jesus, but they do not know how to come to Jesus. There are some people in, God, in the gospel, like a lepers, you know, the bleeding woman, they approach Jesus. But like this paralyzed man, he was not able to come to Jesus by himself. Right? He needed someone to bring him to, to Jesus Christ. And there are so many people who are hungry for true love. There are so many people they are hungry for true relationship. And they want their the void in our in their hearts to be filled with the great love of Jesus Christ. But they do not know how to come. They do not have the courage to come to Jesus Christ. Then who will bring them to Jesus Christ? And what is your answer? Who is responsible those, for those desperate people for Jesus Christ? I want to hear everyone say, me. It's me. Because everyone who are here, you, you, call, you answer to call of Jesus Christ. Follow me. So you have been following him. And that responsibility is given to each of us. And we, the world, <clears throat> the world we are living today, they desperately need someone to bring them to Jesus Christ. So for this desperate man, and he had friends, Fortunately, blessed man, right? Even though he was paralyzed and shut down from society. But still he had good friends who were ready to sacrifice. Jesus said, take up the, your cross and follow me. When Jesus called, right? So let's think about these four people. So it's, I don't know how long they carried. For example, if they carried him from other village. Probably they walked like two hours, three hours maybe, carrying him. Maybe it's hot summer. Like in uh, Kapunam, it's a, a quite like hot place, like a hotter place uh, compared to other parts of Israel because there's a lake of Galilee. And last time when I went there, it was uh, over 40 stations. So imagine you are carrying a person for two, three hours. It's not so much enjoyable, right? So when we work for the Lord, there is sacrifice that comes. When we bring Jesus, when we bring source to Jesus Christ, the sacrifice comes. So when they reach to the, the house where Jesus was teaching, and this paralyzed man asked them to dig and take off the roof. Can you imagine you are 
they are going to you know, damage a, per, a you know, personal property. They may be sued. And later on, they may need to fix the house. But anyway, they have done it. It's a great sacrifice for his friend who want to meet to Jesus Christ, who want to go to Jesus Christ. So they made the sacrifice. Then when I was as I meditating this verse, um, I was trying to imagine the conversation between Peter and these four friends. You cannot just get away from the house after tearing off the roof, right? You need to talk to the owner of the house. So I was trying to imagine this, no one, I mean, wrote and no inspiration, so I began to meditate about the, and imagine the conversation between Peter and these four people. And I think Peter would say, oh man, it's okay. I mean, it's a good, it's a good, I mean, the window um, to look at the sky and um, we're just, um, keep it this way and just cover it uh, to protect the house from raining. So in the future, when the same thing happens, this hole can be an emergency entrance to Jesus Christ. But that's the spirit of following Jesus Christ. And do we have emergency entrance in our church? When some people want to come to Jesus and come to Jesus and worship, do they know how to access to emergency entrance? Do we have that emergency entrance? Do we have people who will lead to the emergency entrance so that no one blocks their way and they come to Jesus Christ? And now let's draw the bigger picture. And Jesus prayed in John 17, 21, that they all may be one as you, the Father are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Now let's think about how they work together, these four friends. So it was not easy to carry to the house, Peter's house. But when they arrived there, this paralyzed friend asked them to bring him to, take him to the roof and make a hole. And they had to make a decision. I don't know whether they had a bold meeting before they you know, did it. So whether they all, oh, I'm, I'm not, in, you know, I'm out. I do not want to do that, you know. It's, it's risky and I maybe get arrested and I do not want to do that. I have my life to go. I have not married yet. I do not have a child yet. And I do not want to do that. One person may disagree with that. And another person may say, oh, I think it's too much work. I just, um, you know, thinking about bringing you to Jesus Christ, but not take you to the roof. Probably there was a, maybe discussion was going on. But eventually, they made decision to take him to the roof. Agreement. So when we work together, we need to know how to agree. There are four of them, their opinions would be different, right? The way, I mean, to deal this kind of work would be different. But they agreed to work together. Are you different, each other? Yes, we are very different. And we represent the 21 countries. We are like uh, less than 80 people but 21 countries we represent. 
which means how we see the things, how we perceive, how we interpret, and how we deal with a certain world, we are very, very different. But in order to work together, we need to know how to agree in differences. Other than that, they may just leave the paralyzed the man, the friend on the, you know, just on the ground and, okay, you need to wait, we need to talk before we go ahead. Maybe they're talking on and on and, oh, maybe we cannot make a decision today. I will take you to, back to your house and we'll think about it again. The man would be lost. Maybe never had a chance again to come to Jesus Christ. So we need to learn how to agree in differences. Once again, when they went to up the roof, another thing to discuss, how to dig the roof and take off the roof and how to make a hole there. And one person said, oh, uh, I know how to make it. And the other person said, oh, no, 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 that shouldn't work. Wouldn't work. I think we need to do a different way. I think this time they really need a board meeting to make a conclusion and to make a decision what to do. But eventually, once again, they agree with one message. Maybe that was not the best way to make a hole in the roof. But that's the decision they made and they worked together. Now that's the spirit. We can, when we work together, we can discuss. But eventually when we make one decision, and then we need to learn to cooperate with that decision. But in many cases, when the decision was made out of my will, say, oh, okay, um, you guys can do that, but I'm out. I would just um, say, okay, you guys, you can go ahead, but um, this is not the way I do, I work. This is not the way I serve the Lord. It's a problem, isn't it? It's a problem. So one, another thing we need to learn is when the decision is made, even though this is not the way I used to do, maybe that's the least way I like to do. But when decision is made, you, we need to learn how to cooperate with the decision that is made. In a team. That's what Jesus expects us to do. And today we made a decision to the new leaders for the light of the church. And no one is perfect. Maybe some think some people think I'm superior and she is inferior, he's superior. No. In Jesus Christ we are all slaves, we are servants. And we, are, we have different way to make a decision. But as a team, when we agree to work together, we have to work together <coughs> as a team. And imagine, and, and after they made a hole, they laid the paralyzed man to, in front of Jesus Christ. And in order to lay a person, probably they had four strings, right? And they made, and they tied the strings to the corner of the mat, and they laid the person little by little. Uh, I don't know whether you have done it before, but when you lay something from you know top to bottom, and something big like um, you know, like two meter and fifty centimeters and a person is there when you lay down, you must lay down the string the same length. What if one person is ignoring and watching the sky and says, I'm working and just, um, you know, 
it draws more. What would happen to the person? Ooh, I don't want to imagine that. The paralyzed man, instead of softly landing, it will be rough for landing, right? So they had to work in unity. So it's exact the same length, so little by little, they had to lay down the man, their friend. That's the spirit we need when we work together as a team. Unity. Unity doesn't mean that you agree with everything. I mean, we, we cannot agree with everything. But when we make a decision to go forward, and that's the time we need the spirit. Even though this is not my way, I will cooperate and unite with you as a team so that we can achieve our goal. That's what Jesus expected to his disciples. And that's what Jesus expects to light us of the church. Are we a team? Imagine the soccer team. How many players play in the soccer? 11. So it's like a finer, you know, uh, finer game and one person, uh, the 11 players in the playground and suddenly one person said, oh, I'm not feeling well today. I don't want to play. Or I said, oh, I'm, oh I, need to be, I need to be chosen as the best player. So I do not constant team, but I constant my record. So instead of cooperating and working together, if one person say, oh, I'm not feeling well, and the other person say, okay, I work for my record, not for the team. Do you think that team is going to win? Maybe? Or probably not. So we are not separate to be in Jesus Christ. But we are one body. Amen. And Jesus is our head. Amen. And we cannot separate, we cannot cut off any part of our bodies. They, they have their own function and has to be remained in the body. What if I say, oh, I don't like my index finger. I don't want to even look, see it. So I always cover like this. And or cut it off. How many would you like to do that? I know some parts of your body you do not like it, right? Maybe your eyes and nose and your mouth, maybe even your feet, your finger. And you, how many of you like to cut them off? Nobody, right? Even though you don't like it, it has to be remain there and do its function. We are one body in Christ Jesus. And Jesus is our head. Do not try to cut off anyone. And do not try to be cut off. We are one body and we are going to work together for the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's all rise for the closing song.